hello, Renee Flamont here, once again, trying to let Minnie look at us. She might last a second. You guys, in every phase of the narcissist cycle, they lie and lie and lie again. Like every single phase. And I'm going to go through them and explain exactly what I mean, especially for new people. Because you might think lies happen during fights. Lies happen if they're trying not to get caught. They're lying throughout every phase of when you meet them to now. There she goes, so we're going to get the butt. I'm going to outline everything in a minute, but I really want you to hear the first sentence. Everything they embody is lying. That needed two hands, embody, but she's sitting on my left hand. Embody <laughs> is lying. So let's get into it. You start out when you meet them and you're in that ever-loving love bomb phase, right? Okay. We all know by now that they have a playbook of recycling the same old lines. And the way that they sell that is they interweave it with things that are, that seem more specific to you. So they try to pass themselves off as truth tellers. In other words, you may be magnificent, but they lie to capture you into their web. For example, <clears throat> meaning if they happen to say comment that your freckles are gorgeous or that your tall height is beautiful, that they like that. Both of those things may be true, yes? And, and okay, and both of those things might are beautiful. But the narcissist doesn't say them from a point of genuine feeling. They've caught on to listening to you, being around you, seeing what you're complimented on. They've caught on to what you'll respond to. So they're going to get, and, and what's true about you and what people notice about you. They're going to use that. They're saying those truths as manipulation to garner your favor. So even though they're not lies, they're technically truths, uh, they're not saying them, it's not from an authentic place. It's from a dishonest place. So the compliments you're hearing may be true about you, so that's confusing. And, and it's all wrapped up in the love bombing language and they really make it about you. They do that on purpose as part of the manipulation. And that's when we review love bombing. We often can't think about any lies that were told because they're very masterful, some of them, about weaving into the love bombing language that they do recycle. They'll weave into that details about me. So for me, he might have said, or he would say, I like that you're so tiny. I know his, he showed me, a, I know what she looks like. She's a workout person. She, I think she weighs more than he does. I'm not being funny. She's a workout person. Very, And he would say to me, you know, I like that you're tiny. I'm sure he tells her, I love that you work out. I'm sure, you know what I'm saying? Like whoever is whatever, they're going to infuse. So you start to feel like this love bombing was tailor made for you. Look. To me, it's in the category of lying if it's all coming from a bad place. I mean, their motivation. So you're like, well, he said he loved my chocolate brown skin, and I do have chocolate brown skin, so he isn't lying. Well, your chocolate brown skin no doubt is doubt, no, no doubt marvelous, but they may or may not feel that way. They just know it's a compliment they can give you that is pertaining to you. They may not feel, he might not have cared if I was tiny. Maybe he really likes brown eyes. But he would say, I like your blue, you know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that's how he felt. He just noticed I had them. He might have noticed, they noticed who else compliments you on what. I just don't think there's anything genuine to even the details they infuse throughout the love bombing. I don't. I just don't. The, you know, whether they feel the compliment or not or the truth about you, the compliment of the truth about you, your beauty, whatever, 
They're going to say it anyway. They're going to comment on the obvious beauty to suck you into their game. Or smart, or funny, or your shape, or size, or coloring, or you might, they might profess to have, you're their type, and you might, or might not be. They lie. They lie. So just because the lie is technically true, that sounds weird. Don't get flattered or confused. Their motivation for telling you the truth about yourself is the lie in this case. Do you understand what I'm saying? You move on and now you're in the relationship and you're in the devalue. You are, I'm telling you right now, and I don't need to know you. You are none of the bad that they say. They're lying. When trying to make you feel bad, they'll insult you in a certain dress, but he liked that exact dress on you before. That's a lie. Obviously, you're looking fly, you're about to go out. And he just doesn't want you feeling good about yourself on that night. Whether you're going out with him or with your friends, especially if you're going out with your friends, but if he feels he's going to knock you down a few pegs, he's going to insult the way that you look. Even if you look beautiful. Even if you dolled yourself up to go on a date with him, he might think you look a little too good, better than he does. So he's going to say a couple of things to make you get you knocked down a couple of pegs because he can't be going out and having you, you know, have too much of an idea of yourself maybe. That day he's not in the mood for that. I told you the story of the jeans. This was a long, long time ago, but I think I did tell you this. Um... He goes, you know, those jeans make you look fat. And that word is so antiquated. We women don't even use it anymore. And are we still fat shaming people seriously? I mean, the whole thing is just an awful thing to say to somebody, really. No reason. We weren't on the topic of do these make me look fat. It was an unsolicited comment. I looked at the jeans. This was like weeks later. It was still bothering me. This was, again, a year and a half ago. And I looked at the jeans. They're size two. So I got very, he got into my head, made me feel terrible. But mathematically, that tells me that's a blatant lie. Not because I'm thinking I am not fat, but I should have said that. I should have said, I beg your pardon. I didn't say anything. And that's a real dig. I mean, I can't believe that anyone would still try to fat shame anybody. I thought we've come a long way. Um, but it was mathematically impossible that his statement was true, that he was trying to throw at me as an insult because even though I'll, I'm a half Italian girl and I'll make jokes about my own, you know, we have a backside and my butt and all this, but I don't, I wouldn't, I, I don't use the word fat to describe anybody. Who says that to somebody? That's a terrible thing to say. So, but, and I think the word fat will do the trick for any woman I know. It's going to have a negative effect on her if you insult her body. So it's like what they'll go to do and devalue quite often. You might have experienced it. They know it's going to bother you. And you know it's a lie. I proved that mine was a lie. Right? Size 8 isn't fat. How can size 2 be fat? Size 10 isn't fat. That's a terrible word. It's a terrible word. 12, 14. How many beautiful women are there? And they're so in shape and they're just on the bigger side. I wouldn't call them fat. It really incensed me the more I think about it. And they do it all the time. I'm, I'm stretching out that example, but I want you to think of your own. And that's why I'm getting incensed. Because all of the insults they've paid you during devalue... I want you to think them through. I bet half of them are lies. They're not even true about you. And you're internalizing them, taking them on as truth, making yourself feel bad. Maybe he's right. 
maybe I am such and such. Do not let it. They are lies. I bet you they are lies. During the Hoover. Okay. They're leaving you 100 messages a night telling you everything in the world's going to be different. No. They're not going to stop stepping out. Seeing the other person. Start behaving better. None of the things they're promising you are they going to do. They're lying. Throughout the entire Hoover, they are lying. They're not going to follow the promises that they're touting to you. There's going to be zero follow through. We all know that who have sat and waited. Zero follow through. They're lying. They're doing nothing, changing nothing, fixing nothing. They're lying. During the hoovering, you'll see a ton of lies come out because they're scrapping. It's almost pitiful once you stop falling for the lies, which I fell to. We all do at some point. But once you see, you can't unsee. And then they just sound and look sad and tired and pathetic and lost. Nothing, he was like throwing spaghetti at a wall and nothing would stick. No matter what he came out with, a lot towards the end and everything was stretched out with me. I told you every process was long. So towards the last bit of stretched out, no matter what he came up with, I swear he'd work all night on the most charming thing he could come up with and I would denigrate it, make a joke, be snarky. I'd say I'm on to you. You don't even, I don't know how many people you said that today too, but I mean, it was, I knew he was lying and it's because I saw and I couldn't unsee and he was pathetic. It truly is pitiful to witness because they still try till their last breath of Hoover to win you over just because to see if they can, not because they want you. I've made many videos on that new people. Please look that up. I'll do another one, but look that up. There's many in there. I mean, obviously, we talk about the same topics, kind of, they keep coming up, right, in different ways. But that Hoover goal of theirs is just to win you. They don't actually miss you. They're not actually going to change. They don't, they're not, they're, they're already with somebody else. They just want to see if they can get you. That's the power trip. So every, they're going to say everything under the sun to see if they can do that. Another place they lie, therapy. And I think I mentioned this before too. Total lies the whole visit. The whole visit. To the therapist, about what happened with you, to you, about something they remember happened, that's going to be off kilter and not quite, sound quite right to you. And then you lie, I mean, and then lie to you on the way home Still trying to say that they didn't lie to the therapist. Because here you are. You're going, why'd you say that? That's not what happened. And then they're trying to gaslight you, calling you insane for even suggesting they lied to the therapist. I beg your pardon. I heard you. You just told her this, but this is what happened. I didn't say that to the therapist. They'll lie about lying to the therapist. Now they're in the car, separate from the therapist. She can't say, yes, you did. So wait, so you told her it happened ABC because I heard you say DEF. I did not say that. I don't know where you were. Or what, what are you, can't pay attention in our counseling? Now they're going to gaslight you. Are you going crazy? I never said that. And what he said was a lie. And then they're fighting with you that they didn't lie to the therapist. I didn't say that. And also I didn't lie. I said exactly what happened. And they round about you in word salad and you can't have a direct conversation that's because they're lying. I mean, they're lying when they said they didn't lie to the therapist 10 minutes ago. How infuriating this can be. I re Oh, I didn't go to therapist with mine, but I know people that this has happened to. And I would go, I, this has happened in other ways with my narcissist. And it's very infuriating. And that'll be a fight. And we know that gaslighting <clears throat> that they'll use whenever they can works because to call a woman crazy elicits a certain response and they know it so they'll do it 
just like the the word fat it lists any there's no woman i know that that word wouldn't bother them to be called that especially it's so insensitive and i don't care what they look like that has nothing to do with it it's not a nice word it's not nice same with crazy and the whole joke is how crazy women get when you call them crazy. Well, we don't like that word. It's not a nice word to call someone. And they know it. And they know that as a people, the gender of what we don't like it. So they use it on purpose. So they gaslight you into saying, no, I didn't say that during therapy. I thought hard about it. And the narcissist lies through every single phase of their life. And a person like that doesn't stop just with their narcissistic partner. If you are someone who lies, then that is your character. The fabric of your being. And you don't straighten up in other areas of your life. They lie to their spouse, their children, their parents, their friends, their business partners, themselves, their mistresses. Uh, my pronoun is he, so you can reverse it if that's, you know what I mean? I always say that, put your own pronoun. Their go-to move is a lie. I'm trying to repeat it here over and over again so everyone lets that sink in. I know there are many of you right now who are listening to your narcissist, hoping what they're telling you is true. You're wishing everything they just said today over lunch is going to be the new normal and that they're going to do a 180. They won't. They're lying. Another way they do it, you ask them a question and they answer you by asking you another question. We're all on to that, right? We're all on to that. And that would be with the gaslighting, they'll do that. What are you, crazy? Did you go to, what are you, nuts? What have you been sipping on or whatever they'll say? Or they might say, well, what did you do? What did you do last night? Well, what did you do last night? Answering a question with a question. They'll cry to sell you their lie. They'll swear on things that make you believe them because you think there's no way somebody would do that. He can't be lying because who would do that? I'm here to tell you, please don't fall for this. If we go by this, then my ex-narcissist mother and three sons would be gone from sickness. Hand to God. Gone. I used to say to him, bite your tongue, you're swearing on those things because I would know he was lying. And he would anyway. So they'll swear on anything. Don't let that convince you. I couldn't possibly imagine the energy it takes to build the lie, keep the lie, continue on the path of constructing and reconstructing and delivering one after another throughout life. Because one lie is going to lead to another. And you know, they don't accumulate guilt or anything. They're fascinating creatures. It's unbelievable. But it's still a pathetic existence, in my opinion. That your truth isn't good enough for life. So you have to lie repeatedly, invent tales, betraying people, all to garner some kind of awe. They're after having people in awe of them. Ironically, all they ever do with this behavior is disgust and disappoint people. People catch on. They see. And then the narcissist is left, ultimately, with nothing to show for the path they took. It's ridiculous. And very oftentimes you'll find an aging narcissist is by themselves. And here's why. I really wanted you to pay attention and mention this. Um, because many times, like I said, you think they're only lying in certain bad times. They lie from A to Z. And these are just a few examples. There's many, many more. I want to mention again, um, thank you for watching. And there's going to be a change to the schedule. The first time I mentioned it was yesterday. Effective next week. I wish I could have given you more notice. I'm going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I got word I may even be in Sydney, Australia by the time this airs. Because I might go out there if, if everything works out. For my daughter's graduation, we got word that she's graduating. They finally gave her a date. 
it's done differently in Australia. You have to wait on the date, and they only give you a couple of weeks' notice. Well, they mean it because it's in two weeks. Not even. It's less than two weeks. So then she comes home, and then we get to get her to law school. The next three months, four, six months are flat out. So I'm going to move it back to three times a week. Um, the idea came also from I was getting advice from people, and they talk about oversaturation. And I know a lot of my, my viewers listen every day on a commute or you, you say so you wake up in the morning. There are, oh, there are almost 500 videos. Please just pick one. I'm sure there are plenty you either haven't listened to or listen to them again. I rewatch them when I need strength. And I'm going to start to pick two or maybe three, whatever, and put them, write them in the thumbnail if they kind of relate to the topic or I think they might be interesting to a person who is watching this topic, you know what I mean? They might not directly relate. Use those on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays because I know there's a lot. It's overwhelming. You're not going to scroll through and find. But if I put them up there and you feel like, you know, save one of those, then do that on Tuesday. I'm sorry. I don't like to give only a week's notice. I think I gave more than that when I went from 7 to 5 at the beginning of this year. Um, the end of last year, I think I had said it more than a week, but this came up quick and I'll reevaluate in September. I thank you all for watching. I will still be commenting. That's not going to stop. And I'll be posting, like I said, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I don't want our education to stop though. So if you're in the habit of doing five days a week, you know who I'm talking to because we talk all the time. You guys have become my friends. Take the Tuesday and the Thursday and pick one of the videos I mentioned. I'm going to do it every day. I'm going to put a couple up there. So there you go. And there's a lot of material in there. And they call my material evergreen because it's it's always going to be, it's not stuff on the news or on current events or on technical gadgets. It's evergreen. So a video a year ago is just as true right now as if I were saying it right now. So please indulge and let that fill in the gaps. I'll reevaluate in September, but... The oversaturation thing, they say let maybe some space go in between when you post your videos and might give a video a chance to grow. If you keep doing it, doing it, doing it, they're not getting maybe a chance to grow. I'm going to try it. I, I, I've tried everything. I, I'll try anything. So this is what I'm going to try for a while, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I'm glad you're with me. Please stay, stay with me. And this week will be Monday through Friday as usual, and that'll start on Monday. Anyway, I thank you for watching. Please go ahead and hit sub, like, and share. And just please remember that they're lying the whole time. Not just during the fight or because you caught them. Or Look back. Review the whole relationship, especially the insults they gave you during devalue. Those were lies. So stop thinking those about yourself. It's very important. I want you to review that. All right? Chin up.